All right, we'll call the meeting to order, 5 p.m. Uh, this is the first meeting of March. Welcome everyone, three trustees, fiscal officer, road administrator, zoning chief, and police chief. Or, <laughs> police chief. <laughs> police chief. <laughs> police chief. <laughs> Fire chief. You got, you got a demotion, didn't you? Um, we have two sets of minutes before us this evening, one for February 20th, and entertain a motion to adopt those. Minutes. Also move. I will second that. Moved and second. Any further discussion regarding those? There's a very small addition. Correcting. Addition. Thank you. Um, what did I miss? Um, I just added uh, the salary adjustment was in order for the increased responsibility due to the addition of that township. Mm -hmm. Just the word mm -hmm. addition about township. I put in or something. Something. <laughs> so may we vote, please? Sure. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Um, then we have the minutes of the special meeting of July, uh, February 27, 2019. Motion. I move adoption. Uh, regretfully, mm -hmm. I move adoption of those minutes. Is there a second? Can I say? Oh, you can't a second. I will second that. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Any non meeting vote, please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. I now entertain a motion to approve payment of bills in the amount of $31,252.50. Broken down general fund, $4,802.35. Fire fund, $15,797.26. Cemetery, $657.20. EMS billing, $6,591.81. Road bridge, $3,403.89. Capital project fund, zero. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. We have a motion. A second. <clears throat> Motion and a second and for discussion regarding payment of these accounts. Hearing none, may we vote please? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Uh, before we go to co uh, correspondence, I think uh, we'll open the public hearing regarding zoning changes before us this evening. Uh, we'll open it at 5.05. Uh, we'll let it run for a little while. Uh, we'll undertake discussion of that under the zoning. Okay, do you want me to, I have um, statements from the Zoning Commission that they wanted submitted at the public hearing. They are, they're all still at work with the new 5 o'clock schedule mm -hmm. they couldn't, couldn't get here. Do you want those read now or when we have the discussion? Let's do it when we have the discussion. Oh. Uh, correspondence, I didn't bring it, so we'll just basically refer to the agenda. We have an uh, invitation to a dementia-friendly uh, celebration breakfast. Uh, we have the uh, meeting announcements for the annual DAC Council. That's the health department uh, um, annual meeting that I'm the representative for uh, on uh, March 19th. I believe it is League of Women Voters newsletter, information for the Center of Medicare and Medicaid, growing local solar, community-based tools. That was an MBRPC project, I believe. Growing green regenerative oil, oil, soil, and local agricultural economics. I believe that's from Community Solutions, Community Solutions right? Yeah. Uh, email from MBRP about the National Association of Regional Councils meeting, uh, um, which I may attend. A meeting announcement for uh, for a Green County MBRP. Since this is Green Council, that's what threw me. MBRPC members uh, that we had. With uh, hosted by Tom Kugler last week, I think it was on Monday. Executive Director's update, Ohio Fuel Texas Sustainability Roundtable was so announcement. We threw all those together. Ohio Cemetery Association Conference agenda, uh, notice from the auditors uh, completion requirements for financial uh, filing annual financial reports for both Miami Township and Clifton Cemetery. Uh, email from RPCC Executive Committee about clarification on uh, Long Beach Comp Comprehensive Plan. This is for the county and preparing for the 2000 census. Um, 
Bobcat pricing, uh, which we've gone over, well, we went over that last meeting because that's um, where we were at. Uh, 229, um, can't be 229, yeah, it's meeting submitted by MSA, it had to be 227. Um, letter from uh, RPC, retired RPCEC director Ken LeBlanc, which came with this beautiful calendar that we have up on the wall. A letter from the Wise Chamber of Commerce and a very lovely thank you note from all members of Home Inc. thanking us for our for remarks. A letter to the editor in support of the um, senior housing project located at 1001 and a half. <laughs> Zenia Avenue. I don't know what that address is. And then the uh, Herman or Marshall. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, any further correspondence uh, in or out for the period? There's, there's, there's one more on the back page. Two more, please. <laughs> oh, one I one just turned to the back page, and here we are. Uh, this is well, this is Margaret's email <laughs> about the a response. A response yeah. to a request for purchasing uh, prop property, purchasing interment rights in the natural burial cemetery. <laughs> okay. Hearing no further correspondence, uh, we'll go to the fire department. All right. Since the last meeting of the board, was it 12 days ago? Um, we've had 28 EMS incidents with. Oh, wait, seven days ago. Yeah, it seems like it was really soon. Yeah. yeah. Well, whatever it was, we had 28 EMS incidents, and I think half of those happened uh, Friday and Saturday. Is that right? <laughs> um, 13 fire, and we've done two fire safety inspections. Uh, Bath Township slowed down this month. They were at 12 in January. Uh, February of had six. That still averages up to nine per month. So. Mm -hmm. uh, three fire incidents and three nine months. Um, I looked over the budget <coughs> budget recommendations and only have a few suggestions for the recommendations. Um, uh, OPF, which is our pension fund, um, it was suggested to lower that because we only spent fifty five thousand last year. Uh, instead of the 90000 that was appropriated. The reason we spent so much less was that um, uh, Alex and Joe, who came into the pension, started at the end of May. Mm -hmm. So we were missing six months of, well, five and a half months of pension contributions for them. Mm -hmm. So um, I will re It might not be quite that high. It probably won't be quite that high, yeah. but it's always tough to be out, you know, because we have to pay it on there over time. Actually, that was factored in. I'll recalculate that and make sure that's that's the number that we used. We came up with last year using like the calculator that Alex had created. Um, so we'll come up with a firm number for that one. Well, I'll firm number. Fire training. Uh, we didn't spend that much last year. Well, actually, we spent more than I thought. So, but we had eight thousand. We spent sixty-nine hundred. So it was suggested drop to five thousand to seven hundred seven thousand. Um, we've already spent six thousand due to a higher contribution on this. Forceful entry door, we thought City Hill Township would pay more. Mm -hmm. um, so if we kept it 8000 at least I have 2000 bucks to send someone for training or something. Oh, you do have tra a training line, services line, and, um, and um, EMS billing as well. Right, but so. I, we can't spend the EMS billing on fire training, no. unfortunately. Right. So um, We're looking at possibly doing a fire certification class this spring, um, but hopefully I think that will still be covered by the workers' compensation right? And then operating supplies and EMS. Um, I suggested a drop from 71 to 56. I'd be a little more comfortable at 65, just because I'm not sure. This will be our first full year with our own funding of all our medications and everything like that. So I'm not exactly sure how much money that's going to be. We didn't do a full year last year? No, I think we started in <coughs> I think May. was like a banner month for us. <laughs> um, and it may end up, I mean, it may end up lower than that. Mm -hmm. um, okay. With Alex, Alex is in charge of the supplies, and um, I can know Alex is pretty good <laughs> with that stuff. So. Um, other than that, everything else looks good. I mean, it makes sense to me. Okay. Um, as you're reacting not just to the original proposal, but to Chris's suggested changes. Yes. Yes, sir. Um, oh, I forgot that one. Um, as you recall, several 
meetings ago, uh, a member of the public, uh, Fairborn resident, was here to express a concern uh, mm -hmm. about an interaction that she had had uh, on social media with uh, the assistant chief. Mm -hmm. um, and you directed me to look into it, so I did such a thing. Um, and uh, I, you know, when we went through our policy, our social media policy, there are no express violations of the policy there. He never identified himself as a department member or employee. Obviously, many people in the community know him as such. Um, so I did discuss the situation with him and advised him that it was ill advised. And that we should be not engage with anybody on social media in, in any kind of way, no matter how, you know, obviously you're entitled to your opinion, but when we get to our level, and he understood that. I think it was more frustration than anything on his part, but um, so yeah, we discussed it. Uh, I don't find any violation of policy for any, any reason for discipline mm -hmm. on that. Um, she also expressed a concern that you know that interaction might uh, keep people from doing public records requests, um, and I have not seen that uh, in my almost 25 years here. I think I've had one public records request prior to this year. And I think I've had 10 since then, um, not just from her, from other people as well. So I think that people are still happy to, <laughs> to file those public records requests. And we have, you know, well, I have diligently worked to, to answer all those within a reasonable amount of time as prescribed by ORC. So, um, you know, I, I understand, I certainly understand her concern. Um, but I don't think that's a symptom of a massive problem here. There was a second half, or a second part, I should mm -hmm. say, mm -hmm. of that mm -hmm. comment mm -hmm. that was made that night about a potentially toxic yeah, culture here in the fire department. Um, Could you, or did you look into that? Yeah, I mean, I, I did, did look into that. I've spoken with members about that. Um, I mean, I, I think certainly we did have. A, I don't know if toxic is the right term, but you know, we had a certain employee in the past that was no longer with us um, who did uh, contribute to, I guess, what could be called a toxic atmosphere at times. Um, he, did, you know, he resigned since then. Um, members here, I mean, the ones I spoke with, didn't seem to feel that there was any issue uh, other than the normal stuff that goes on in the fire station. Mm -hmm. Discuss things. They talk about things. They joke about things. Um, let's, say, no, let's say in the last five or ten years, uh, how many um, members, either paid or volunteer, have, have come to you personally and um, made complaints or accusations or uh, any any kind of? I would say. I mean, just off off the cuff, in the last five to ten years. about other members, you know, mm -hmm. from member to member, um, that we've dealt with either, you know, through policy, with discipline, or just through mediation type situations and, and discussing. Okay, let's <coughs> narrow that down then. How many complaints in the last five or ten years have you had for your officers in the department? Um, there were several concerning one officer who's no longer here, mm -hmm. uh, and those were all dealt with. That <laughs> helped part of that problem. Uh, in the last five years, there, I have received no specific complaints from members regarding officers and the department of supervisors. Mm -hmm. um, okay. You know, we've had, at least on my end, I've had no um, specific complaints about staff uh, from the public or from hospital mm -hmm. personnel. Um, certainly no complaints about uh, patient care mm -hmm. and the quality of care that's provided. Um, you know, one of the things that we are planning to do this year, you know, as we, as the department has really had a big turnover, and we have a lot of younger faces on the department, um, one of the things we've talked about, myself, the assistant chief and Lieutenant Ayers, is kind of surveying numbers, doing a more anonymous kind of formal type survey to see what people's thoughts are and, you know, what things they'd like to see change and that kind of stuff. It's been a long time since we've done that. Um, mm -hmm. And it's always a good thing just to see what the culture and climate is here in the department. But I certainly do not believe that, um, you know, 
people's personal feelings aside, everyone here is a professional and is able to provide a level of care even when they want to Do you still get the um, average amount of compliments that, that you had received over the past, uh, you know, cards and letters and things like yeah, that? Yeah, certainly. I, don't, I mean, I don't think I've seen any kind of decrease in that. Um, mm -hmm. People are very appreciative of the service that we provide, mm -hmm. uh, both here and in our, our new territory. Mm -hmm. um, you know, most of those compliments are usually passed on to the crew right then and there by, by the patient or the family. Again, I, I just don't see, I, I mean, I see this as an isolated incident, which has probably triggered a lot more, um, but I don't feel there's any massive cause for concern. We have some kind of toxic mm -hmm. underbelly of our fire department that's out there. Do you have any first-hand experience you'd like to relate about the quality of service and provided? Um, except to uh, say that I think it's been very good. Um, and thorough and well organized and I mean having been a patient myself repeatedly it's uh, been great <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> okay. well, why do you keep repeating those <laughs> <laughs> frequent well, flyers you know you can't get rid of them well we started a free beverage service oh. now, so. well, I oh, that's the extra hundred dollars on that ambulance cost <laughs> 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 beverage cost yeah. oh. well good yeah I mean I I don't you know I, I'm very confident regardless of relationships I may have with other members of the department personally and otherwise <laughs> that everyone here Particularly those providing EMS, those EMTs and paramedics, as a professional, mm -hmm. knows what they're doing and does it very well. Yeah. Um, you know, we do receive compliments from our medical director and from hospital staff on a regular basis, which is always a good thing. Um, you know, sometimes patients may not be happy with what's happening. We have patients who don't want to go to the hospital but have to. We have patients who may be under the influence. And, mm -hmm. You know, that type of thing. But I would say the vast majority of our people have a positive impact on patients and their families and, mm -hmm. and uh, the community should be very proud of the service that's provided here uh, by our paid and volunteer staff. So. I agree <clears throat> wholeheartedly. Uh, before we move on, Don, is there anything you'd like to feel? Anything to that? Okay. Anything else, Mark? No. Anything else about that? Uh, no, I mean, you know, we'll just work to make sure that people, you know, that's our social... Let Carol in. I am, I am locked into work. Oh, did you? Okay. Our social media policy, you know, is it was new last year, and you know, it's, a, it's a tightrope, kind of. You don't want to restrict people's rights, mm -hmm. but also as employees, obviously, you know, I kind of watch the people accused to use the 1950s term. Um, but uh, I mean, I think overall, people will comply with it, and this was an isolated incident, and uh, will not happen. Will not happen again. Um, you know, and again, as I said, there's no reason at this point to believe that we have any kind of similar. Crisis. Mm -hmm. The surface. Okay, so moving along, how are you doing in your filling the supervisory role, the new supervisory roles that you spoke of last week? Uh, I met last week, well, Lieutenant Harris and I met last week with the eight candidates. <coughs> um, they have their written exam this next week. And then we'll move into the tabletop assessments following that. And then recommend to you to help those people who are um, So we're looking at filling like two to three positions. So, um, as I said to them, all eight of them are, are actually really good candidates. Uh, all have their strengths that would be, would be good so that anyone who doesn't get the position hopefully won't run off and be angry. Uh, <laughs> and then in the future, I mean, there would be a pool to, put, you know, to select from for the future, future appointments. So. Okay. Um, you had mentioned a little while back that you had was it two applications for the empty empty the open positions? Um, yeah, department. Yeah, we have um, we just have the second one in today. Mm -hmm. So the references have been checked on the first guy. And we're just waiting to call back to get an interview scheduled. Mm -hmm. uh, the second guy is actually currently going to this one. I'm not checking the so it's good to be able to do that. So. Mm -hmm. um, 
But actually, when we have positions, I mean, as long as they both check out, we've got positions for both because we have one 24 hour remaining and we have some of the 12 hour slots also. Mm -hmm. so, um, you just have the one 24 hour remaining? Yeah. Yeah, that's the last, one of the Alex's shifts. He needs a 24 hour part. And how many of those uh, qualify for the signing bonus? Uh, if, well, two currently, um, Cassidy got, or, already has his first part, Josh has to get his still his first part, and then, uh, whoever takes his third position is qualified for it as well, and that's got to be the end of the sign up bonus. Okay. Those are currently exists. Mm -hmm. so. so, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's helped people want to apply. Part of our problem still is that our, our overall pay scale is low, so that kind of keeps people up. Plus, everyone in the local still is hiring at the same time, so mm -hmm. we're competing against places. There are some places that pay less than we do, but they also don't <coughs> have to fight fire on a greater day basis. Mm -hmm. Younger guys seem to play that role. <laughs> and I can't promise them that, so yeah. ask Richard to start setting fires for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good response for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, I hope you know. Hopefully, by the definitely by the next meeting, we'll have someone for you guys to mm -hmm. fill that position. Good. Um, and then last but not least, <coughs> last but not least, I'll be out of the country March nineteenth to twenty seventh. Um, Assistant Chief Powell will be acting chief while I'm gone. So. Okay. Anything else for the chief? No. Um, which country are you heading for? I am going to Switzerland. Uh -huh. Should be a country. But no, uh, my, my dad lives there and he's having surgery. So mm -hmm. it's going to be a good son. And, uh, assist him and more importantly my stepmother <laughs> through his surgery because uh, my father will more than likely be a very poor patient. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised. This, this is actually his first, he's 74 years old, it's his first ever hospital, hospital, hospital yeah. uh, adventure, so, uh, which, you know, it's, it's had a, he's had a good run, but yeah. <laughs> he's got to have some back surgery, so I figured in, in order to keep my dad and my stepmom married, I probably should go with that. Don, anything else? I'm, I'm interested uh, at some point kind of a review, you made a comment that our pace scale was lower than many of the departments in the area, and that some are even lower. I did get a phone call, someone saw the ad, and said you couldn't believe how little we're paying. Yeah. Uh, I said I'd find out how we're prepared. Um, I will... So, you know, just a chart showing other townships. Yeah, um, Alex actually did a survey for us last year uh, well, just of comparable getting, size. Getting a copy of that would... Yeah, I will get that to you. I'd like the copy of you. Can I one? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll share mine. When you talk about comparable size, the size of the department or the size of the ter the population you cover? or uh, The size of the... Uh, Alex looked at departments that were close in size in terms of run volume. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, we can, you know, he's not going yeah, I just realized there were different ways to compare yeah. size. Yeah, I mean, you know, Washington Township, for instance, they start their guys at almost $3 more an hour, but they also are constantly go on 4,000 more calls than we do. So, <coughs> really couple of, plus, they serve in Washington Township, so mm. there's a lot of money there. <coughs> to uh, new firehouse report seems like <laughs> been here before but uh, we did open uh, public bids last two, two Wednesday and uh, we had seven bids and the lowest bid was 21 percent over the uh, the bid estimate from the architect which put it 11 percent over the maximum um, allowable uh, bid. 10% being the maximum. Uh, so we will 
me to do some value engineering, my least favorite phrase of all. Uh, and uh, and, and uh, repost it for bids. That's How much did the bids range? I mean, one was 21% over. What was the highest? They were all except one very close to each oh, other. Well, that's, uh, a good, that's a good sign. So there was speak. one that was substantially over, uh, mm. maybe closer to 800,000 over. Was it six two? Yeah, six two, six three, something like that. So, yeah. Everyone else was. So that's a close group to the five. Yeah. Group, so, that's, so that sort of tells you that that's what it's going to cost to build yeah. that particular building. So it was mm -hmm. Six or seven bidders? Seven. Seven. Yeah. Oh, that was this. Yeah, you had a reasonable turn. Yeah, quiet. But. So we'll plug along and see what options we have and make some decisions and get it redesigned and Read it. Better than jail, I actually talked about. Can't the newspaper write something, you know, as a public plea to <laughs> <laughs> donate a million dollars to us? <laughs> <laughs> to Heather Nick, to put difference. on a building or something? <laughs> I mean, is it fair to say that the 21% uh, was roughly a million? No, the 21% the was. Well, it's five, 5 million, is the 500, almost exactly 500,000. The bid was two and a half million would be five hundred thousand, be twenty percent over. The, the minimum, the bid estimate was five five million, yeah. with the additional contingency that was five two five. The lowest. Came in at five, 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 six, something like that. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it was two hundred and fifty roughly mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. Over the maximum. No, it was. This, it was my, my memory was that they were all over seven million. What? No. Oh okay, yeah, no, there was. There were like group of five, seven, and then there was a one at no. six. My memory is. That's pretty bad. I'm not questioning your memory, but remember that's burned into my mind. <laughs> they were all five six and five seven. Yeah, so and then one six two. No, all of them. Six and seven, I believe. Anyway, they were high. <laughs> what are you supposed to? Yeah. I mean, they're all in the next room. It's yeah, I had to look again. I thought, I thought it was steeper. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they went from 5, 6 to 6, 9. 6, 9. That was the highest. Mm -hmm. And it was 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 7, 5, 7, 5, 7. Mm -hmm. so that Except for that one company. That mm -hmm. and, the, and the estimate for the cost was? Well, the estimate was, was 4. Well, it was five five million. Let's call it five million even, and then you could you go ten percent above that. Right, which would be five five. <clears throat> and so we were only a hundred thousand over the. That's not very much. That's not. Mm -hmm. No, that's not ten percent over. No, that's no, ten percent over the maximum. No, it's five six. Five, five, five to five six is two percent over. Well, the general contract base bid from the architect, well, from the estimator, was four six. Oh, plus four, six. the contingency, contingency plus the possibility of the three fifty. So whatever that is. that was five something. Mm -hmm. Okay, four six to five six would be about. Cool. 20 yeah. percent. But four six isn't wasn't the wasn't the real wasn't the real minimum because it was four six plus the contingency plus the three fifty from the additional loan as it were. What's our contingency It's like two two eighty five. Two eighty five. Oh. Yeah, I'm not arguing that 
was beyond our reach. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it was beyond our reach, but it, you know, it will be important to know what our our goal to value engineer down to will mm -hmm. be. So. Um, Some of the options that they're looking at, um, and they haven't submitted them to us yet, is to uh, is uh, back to potentially changing the roof line, back to potentially the. If you read the, if you read, if you went back and read the estimate from the estimator that we all love, uh, the change from the cement board, the you know expensive cement board rain screens, screens uh, originally to the brick. The brick was more expensive. The brick was 50000 more than what they estimated the rain screens to come in at. Mm -hmm. Now, the rain screens came in three hundred or five hundred and fifty-eight thousand dollars over what the estimate was, but the brick estimate was more than the rain screen. So, who knows that? So, you got that, you got the apparatus bay, you've got change in the doors and the, and the glass doors, which I, I looked back on those numbers and that was only, only 5,100 per door. So that would be, if we ended up going four doors, that would be 20,000. That's not a huge amount. Potentially changing the window size from the, from the double wide, and I'm not sure what the height is. Um, that may bring that down, but you know, um, we haven't talked. I don't think we've talked about what we might be able to go from the 73 foot width of the apparatus bay or depth. How we want to look at that down to 65? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna. They have to. They have to give us some information yeah. what other firehouses they're building. Right. What, what they're what they're building. Because that's going to be a one or the other thing. Because we won't be able to fit the trucks we have in now if we lose a bay and shrink. Mm -hmm. Because if we go to four bays, we're going to have to double stack everything. Mm -hmm. right. Ends up being all purposely up for bay. But, you know, we're going to do what you're going to do, short of mm -hmm. someone makes a check. Which then would get their name on the building. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move along. Uh, yeah. Daniel? Yes, sir. We've done a lot of cemetery work, haven't we? We've been very busy. Yeah. Been since the last meeting, we've had three burials in the Blue Forge. Uh huh? Mm -hmm. We must be dying to get it? All within yeah. 20 feet of each other, it seems yeah, like. Yeah, like the yeah, whole business is 100 foot. Uh -huh. <laughs> very practical. I'm glad you've got it organized. <laughs> <laughs> Keep my work centralized yeah. that way. We've got some ashes pending. One in Clifton with more burial. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's pretty much about what's going on. You, uh, can you burn any kind of the spring? I think so. Would you burn that natural? Oh, yeah, that, sure. That was fun. <laughs> I'm talking about a controlled burn of mm -hmm. the grass. Yeah. Yeah, we did that, I guess, two years ago. Two years ago. They could use it. Yeah, certainly. Oh, yeah, that one. Like a piece. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> that prairie grass. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. 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 It does like burn. Yeah. Mm. So. It's yeah. healthy. You know, it's okay. It's growing healthy, so it burn off the you know, little healthy. Oh, yeah, it's supposed to. Yeah. It, it worked. worked. They tell us. It worked. It worked last time. So it, was, it was amazing how pure the grass was the year it was burned. Mm -hmm. Now last year, there was a lot of weeds came back into it, and it wasn't nearly as nice looking. There's some scrub trees coming out too, so once you burn, I'll go. Go get them. Okay. Um, easier to get to. Yeah. Burn off. I'll check the weather, and we'll get that scheduled in the next week or so. Well, whatever starts. works for you. Well, since the snow's off the ground. Well, yeah. Once we get rid of that, but because <laughs> otherwise, once it starts to grain up, then right, that's then it'll look like mange and. It'll <laughs> Curious if you can get to it or no. Uh, oh, got a great forecast, so. Right. <laughs> See what yeah, I'm probably being busy somewhere else. <laughs> but that's about all I had for that. Okay. You have anything to think of? 
No. Is it going to the rain department? Mm -hmm. uh, plowing and salting has been on an activity this year. And the pothole repair. Because mm -hmm. we're in the middle of it. So get back on that for the rest of the week, I hope. Are you going to move your tank or something? It should, hopefully by Friday we'll have it here. Can you give me some plates to put on, license plates that have to go on? Yeah, that's what I thought. No, usually we just keep our license plates in the safe. <coughs> in case, I don't know what the case is. Well, I haven't <laughs> seen any others actually running a plate other than their number. Right, yeah, we don't need to have them. So I've got to set there. We the always truck. get them, and then we just put them. At least actually, we turn them for the big trucks, just for the set. Well, Mike brought set, set for that one, okay. too. I mean, yeah, if we'll you want them on, I'll put them on. If not, no, because we'll just take them off. <laughs> well, they're in the, in the cab. Okay, cool. I'll just leave them there. Sounds good. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Thursday, the 9th. Margaret, did you want to um, talk to Dan about the tree situation on High Road? Oh, right. Um, I got a phone call today from um, a woman who lives on Quarry Street. And... Um, <coughs> she expressed a concern regarding the property, the wooded area that is uh, directly across the street from the entrance to Morse Bean. And with our last um, big windstorm that we had a couple of Sundays ago, um, a lot of trees have come down on that property. And she said a couple actually had um, fallen into the road, but we're clear, the road was clear, because she called the state highway, state highway people or somebody, and they said you need to contact the township. Anyway, um, so she's just concerned because there's just a lot of trees that are even like kind of um, uprooted, but haven't all the way fallen. They're, laying, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're just, you know, a, another big blast of wind away from landing in the street. Yeah, close. yeah. <laughs> and well, bottom line, she's expressed concern about the property and all of the trees, and she, she and her husband frequently drive down um, High Road. And I um, told her that I would certainly let the township know that, that she's called and has a concern, but I also told her that I believe it to be so that unless the tree actually falls in the road, it's not our responsibility to go onto a property and, yeah. and remove any trees that are looking hazardous. But the minute they do fall on the street, then, then we'll we'll, come, we'll take care of it. But um, you know, it's really uh, the property owner's um, I mean, if it's responsibility. Road, if it's a threat, we can do it. And right. And the one you're talking about, I know. you know, the property owner. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. You're the tree property. Okay. <laughs> well, I told her I would let you all know, and um, what I thought was the case, and that I would call her back, let her know that she's been that you we've been informed, mm -hmm. and I duly notified. Duly notified, and who are, I don't know the property owner, but somebody might know who it is. And maybe want to mention to him that there's been a concern. Yeah, you could tell Express. her that she could talk to the property owner. Yeah, but she she doesn't know who owns the property. No, but and it's, I, it's, it's, get, that information over. is public. You it's, could tell it's a dead tree that blew over and is laying in another tree. Yeah. it's not posing a real threat, but it's it's sooner or later the dead tree's going. To it's worrying her. Yeah, I know. I understand. Yeah, the people worry. It's a Good concern. Yeah, but we know about it. And we're, it's on the list. I, I'll let her know that we're we're um we're keeping our eyes peeled, and she knows our phone number the minute one of those drops on the road. <laughs> she just, but she feels like she's playing Russian roulette driving down the road. Uh, yeah, yeah. She just she just sees it as a hazard. You know, she can just see them, and she's like, yeek. So that's okay. it. Alrighty. Okay, done. I wanted to I'll let her know. Know that. Um, We got a uh, we got a listing of all the political subdivisions in the state and how much the additional uh, gas tax would change uh, as a result of if the 18 cent uh, tax was was initiated or instituted. I should say. Our revenues, our gas tax revenues. Yeah, uh, and we would potentially have an increase of about an additional ninety thousand um, dollars per year. Which would effectively double, a little even a little more than double, the amount of gas tax that we receive we receive now, which has gone down over the years. Uh, but uh, that would be a that would be a nice little be useful useful amount. <laughs> <laughs> nah. You know, one, but maybe. Mm -hmm. 
and, and it would go a bit more down with the extra. It would it would go up a little each year with inflation, and it would be a guaranteed. Well, I'm not if anything's guaranteed in this world, but um, it's it's set it's to be going a, until yeah a 60-40 split um, in the revenue, 60 percent to the state, 40 percent to the local jurisdictions. So. Well, it's good news. Hasn't passed yet. Well, but it's good news. <laughs> if it does. If it's potential, that'd be great. The 90,000 is percent of increase? No, no. No, that's, that's, that's dollars. That's actual dollars. Okay. $90,000. And that's, that's it's designated a, for road repair, or is it designated for certain things? Well, it would be for the same uses that, I mean, it's for the, it's for the road department. Use it's not specific for like it has to be for chip and seal or asphalt or, or whatever, but it is for the maintenance of the roads. Yeah. Cool, we're hopeful. So cross your fingers. Not a new back. Call your <laughs> state representative and state senator. Um, uh, I may fire off a little missive to those folks. Um, back up a little how progress on the annual report. That new website's got a little spot that says, yeah, I saw that, it looks really nice. Yeah. 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 Annual report. You, you, it, should, it should be here annually. <laughs> uh, since I've made all the corrections that you suggested, those have all been done. I thought everything else was done. It looks very nice. Thank you. I thought it looked very nice too. Um, and thank you for your suggestions. Could I, I, see on there, Could I see the roster of the 38 volunteers? <laughs> I thought I'd check. I'm maybe putting it as <coughs> two 38, but yeah. I don't know. Or an indeterminate number of volunteers. <laughs> indeterminate <laughs> number. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dan. Anything else for road administrator? Can tell them about any big potholes you've seen? No. <laughs> Please do. That's all right. <laughs> Although you are filling potholes. I am. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. um, so, we'll move to this box of the meeting. Here I am. Um, well, I have what I believe to be our last amendment of temporary appropriations <laughs> or resolution. <laughs> I believe it probably is. <laughs> because hopefully we'll be into our permanent appropriations and that should. Those, those amounts should stick for a while. Um, regardless, we have to go through this process and you know, I can't just do it, even though they're temporary. Um, so it's resolution 2019-09. Whereas it is an ongoing process to determine appropriations for fiscal year 2019, and whereas it is required to submit all appropriation changes made to the 2019 budget to the county auditor. Now therefore the trustees authorize the following changes to the temporary appropriations and instruct the fiscal officer to submit them to the county auditor. And in the general fund, I increased contracted services by $450. Uh, road and bridge, I increased salaries by $410. they have been kind of busy this first couple months and eating away at our, <laughs> our appropriation line. Um, in the fire fund, I increased um, electricity by $600, water and sewer by $30 whopping dollars. The cemetery water usage went up. Well, anyway, um, and repairs and maintenance increased by 500. That's it. What's the resolution number? 2019-09. Uh, okay. I'd entertain a motion to adopt resolution 2019-09. I so move. Mr. Hollister uh, moves. Second. Mr. Crockett seconds. Any further discussion regarding that resolution? <laughs> Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Crockett? Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Okay, that all being said, let's do our permanent appropriations. Want to discuss that? Have we discussed that? Are we good? We good. Well, it, it is kind of my dealio. <laughs> I mean, I asked at the last meeting that we go ahead and try and review, you know, make sure we got all our numbers lined up. And Don, ha I haven't received any other recommendations for changes other than what. Colin has offered in his. Have you factored those in, or you're just going to 
I, I will I will put them in. Uh -huh. um, so uh, if there's no other contributions, Don, Mark? Uh, beyond what Chris has already suggested. Okay. Yeah. Can um, we, we, we can, um, I mean, the resolution number would be 2019-10. Okay. Um, so we can go ahead and go there if you want. Or do we have a copy? Meeting. Do you have the paper in front of you with all the numbers and the corrections? No, but do we have a resolution? Of how uh, not, uh, not, no, but, it, you know, we can make one. Uh, well, you're telling immediately you're, following the meeting. It, but in terms of our complying with the auditor, uh, next meeting would work? It would work. So if let's, you want to wait, let's look, do that. Okay. I would like That's to, fine with me. Yeah. Rather yeah, just than to, going from the hand corrected. Uh, sure. Yeah. No problem. I just, wanted to, just wanted to see if there's any other comments or contributions and see if there's not. I have the information that I need and I'll we'll create the. We'll do it next meeting. Okay. Sounds good to me. Anything else? I don't think so. Unless somebody has a question for me. Anything else for the fiscal officer? Hearing none, we'll move to zoning. Okay. Richard, the floor is yours. Uh -huh. um, okay, I, I want to report that I, uh, since the last time I saw you, I issued a, a permit for a new home out on Harbison Road near the Cedarville Township line. That neighborhood um, so that's the, the activity um, had a conversation with uh, Richard Dillon about his piece of property on Fairfield Pike you know he, he owns a piece of property that runs between the Catholic Cemetery and well the, the two residences that are there mm -hmm. and he actually sold off part of that property, the, the residential part of it, and the part that remains is the, the, the farm buildings and, and some acreage is, is still tilled. And he was wondering what he could do with that, and I said, it's zoned residential, so basically <laughs> you could build a house on it. Mm -hmm. He was looking at some kind of a commercial use for the existing structures, so I said, I didn't see any way that that could happen. Um, and that if he actually wanted to, even even with working with the village, I doubt if he could do something commercial in that area. He'd be in the middle of a re surrounded by residential property, but that um, that in order to have sewer and water, which is what you need for anything other than than a single family dwelling on that property, um, that you probably want to look at annexation with the village opposed to trying to do anything within the township zoning. Um, anyway, so that that inquiry took place, and that basically took place because someone came to him and said, can I <laughs> use those buildings for storage? Mm -hmm. Or buy the property and use the buildings for storage. And I said, you know, if you're living there and you want to keep things in your building, that's one thing. If you want to operate a business where you're storing other people's right. goods, no. Um, do you want me then to go ahead with the, the Zoning Commission's recommendation? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, as you know, the Zoning Commission has recommended deletion of three chapters from the Zoning Code. The two chapters for multifamily use, which, and I should check to make sure I say the right numbers, the R2 two-family residence district and the R3 multifamily residence district. Those are being recommended for removal for two reasons. One, we don't have any of those districts. And two, they both require sewer and water to develop, mm -hmm. and which we also don't have. And, and thirdly, our comprehensive land use plan has said if you're going to do higher density development, it should be adjacent to the existing municipalities where there is the sewer and water available, which in the case of uh, Yellow Springs would mean annexation anyway, at least under current, current law. Mm -hmm. And then the third chapter remove is the plan unit development chapter. And 
the primary reason for removing that chapter is, again, it's, it's development. It's in contradiction to the comprehensive plan, which says we want to maintain agriculture in the, in the township. But it also has internally various problems. We, we, had it, we had someone try to abuse it, so to speak, to use it for a simple lot split. There's nothing in it that says that it can't be used for that. Mm -hmm. So it definitely needs repairs. And I can I could lay out scenarios of some other things that, that could be done we haven't asked for. And the chapter, the 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 plan unit development chapter has been used once in the whole time that it's been here. And on one hand you could say it was used successfully. Willowfield's development is a, a nice residential development. However, the area that was set aside under the PUD program, the open space, is a honeysuckle thicket, which isn't exactly what anybody anticipated in, in that process of having open space right. as a result of PUDs. But let me read to you um, the Zoning Commission, well basically, oh, I'll just read, Brian Corey says, I have put together the following talking points related to why the Zoning Commission would like to eliminate the section on PUDs from the zoning resolution. Richard will be attending the meeting on March 4th at 5 p.m. and is offered to make remarks on our behalf along with any of us who can attend. Please read through my points and add your own for distribution to all. Okay, and so Brian says, reasons why the Zoning Commission wants to eliminate the PUD section from the resolution. PUDs are in conflict with the primary objectives of the Township Comprehensive Land Use Plan. The comprehensive plan strives to protect prime soils and preserve farmland for development. While well, the purpose of PUDs is to develop that land for non-agricultural use. The comprehensive plan strives to preserve the township rural field in quotations in favor of lower density residential development for three acre lots, while PUDs encourage high density development. PUDs encourage higher density residential development that puts increased demand on township services, emergency road maintenance. PUDs would create disconnected popcorn development that would have an urban sprawl effect on our rural township. Undeveloped farmland acts as a buffer around the township's conservation areas. And then Linda Parsons added, also, we are already experiencing too much toxic chemical runoff into our watersheds without adding the added burden of additional runoff due to non-permeable surfaces, more streets, sidewalks, driveways. Traffic would increase, thereby creating more road upkeep, additional schools would eventually be necessary, etc. Hello, suburbia. My question is why push to keep the PUD portion in the comprehensive in the zoning code? Are developers putting pressure on the trustees? After all, considering the proximity of the township, I can understand the potential for some aggressive, slabbering developers trying to sway opinion. So those are the comments directly from the zoning commission. Brian with his level head <laughs> and Linda with a little bit more uh, punch. Uh, I can tell you that that this decision, like mo I, I, I will say that the elimination of the two multifamily residential districts did not take a lot of, of anguish, but. The, the PUD chapter was, was read up one side and down the other and back and forth. And, and finally, everybody sort of realized that, well, this isn't, this isn't what we said we wanted to do. Uh, and, and while the, our comprehensive plan doesn't flat out say that planned unit development should be eliminated, it, it certainly does speak to the points that that kind of development is not what, what we're anticipating. That if you were to have a higher density development, as we say, it should be adjacent to the existing municipalities. The other part of it is that our PUD chapter is not just for residential development, it's for industrial development, for commercial development, other items which are, are totally inappropriate at the present time. So that's the the reasons in a, in a nutshell. I'm uh, here to answer any other questions or concerns that you have as best I can, 
and I will tell you whether I'm answering them from my own head or I'm remembering what the discussion was at the place of the Zone Commission. So I'm more or less representing them tonight. Okay. Uh, John? If, uh, may I? <laughs> <laughs> It seems to me there's an advantage in having an alternative if someone wants to, I mean, they, they have a road frontage, uh, they're, they're, far, they're, they're going to continue farming inside, but they'll just develop the road strip. Mm -hmm. uh, be able to say that, that is, you know, following the three acres, 300 foot frontage, be able to say, well, instead of all those driveways coming out on the road, and, uh, we'll allow you the equivalent number of lots on smaller, smaller lots, more compact, uh, and then the other area has to stay open. Um, there's a lot of advantages in that, both for the developer and for maintaining farmland. Yeah. Uh, you still have to then build a road. Yep. Okay. And the reason that the development that occurs in the township occurs the way it does is because no one is investing in building new roads. We have we have one residential development in the township that's not PUD. Okay. Which is. Women Mary Court, which was done with the three acre homes and a road, both. Okay. And no open space. And and no open space. Okay, the open space is still around the houses. Our PUD says you you still have to build the same density, one house per three acres. You can push the houses closer together, and then you have this area of land which doesn't get used. Then why are the zoning commission members? I'm sorry. Why are some commission members all so concerned about all this increased development when it's exactly the same development that would happen in the zone that the PUD would be? I don't. I. They're not. I don't think they're increased. That there's a. I mean, Linda sort of talks about it like it was a threat. Brian also does. But the. The development they're talking about is changing farmland into residences. They control that, not us. Yeah, and they're saying this is this is one, in line with the comprehensive plan to they would not have, change farmland they would into have, residences. They would have to rezone it to R1A or R1B. No, we allow residences currently to be built in A1. That's correct, but no more, no higher density under a PUD than it is under A1. That's right. But what's what but in this case it makes it easier in the PUD <laughs> well, to build more houses. It doesn't. It, well you don't build more houses, you build exactly the same right, right, houses. All right. You use you have to build less road. Okay. You, you could use, use a PUD road. You right could use now. Less land. Without building any road and put houses right down the road mm -hmm. every hundred feet if you wanted to. Exactly. Well, it that's not that. exactly a good idea, is it? Well, we don't have to approve it. Okay, but no, you exactly. shouldn't have have situations where the you don't give some indication of what is acceptable and what isn't acceptable. I, I guess I'm coming. I'm misunderstanding. Is if someone comes in and says, I want PUD, mm -hmm. we don't have to prove anything. We don't have to say, yes, you can have a PUD. No, you don't have to. And But it would be very disingenuous if they met all the requirements and you said, ah, we don't like it. Uh, that's well, my understanding of, is, I mean, is are you the, well, one, the one PUD plan that did go through, right. uh, there was lots of pushing back and forth. I, I was not what here. I, 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 I was not from involved distance. with the township government at that time. Um, the, the other thing is you made the assumption that the open space would not be farmed. 
the open space, and I have yet to see a PUD where that has happened in any township. Uh, well, I, okay. come on, I the other thing is that most residences don't actually, if they have the choice in the matter, want to be next to active farming. Mm -hmm. And when you have a three acre parcel, your house can be fairly well removed from the, from the land that's still around you. Okay, but if you're down to a smaller lot, it has to be on the average of one and a half acres or a little less than that to meet the, the set-aside requirements. Then you, there's no buffer with the agricultural land. Then don't buy it. <laughs> well, See, that okay. is, to me, there is the public good of having more open space if there's no increase in the okay. number of houses. We built. don't have a definition of open space. Okay. Uh, so I'll just I'll when say I look at this one PUD, of the problems. One of but, this, this does not look like... But what we have a, a in our township is open space. Mm -hmm. Most people would refer to what we have as open space. All right? And every time you build a house, whether, no matter how you build it, you're taking some of that away. Period. The question is how much? Mark? Um, my question was about uh, water drainage. The, uh, if you use smaller lots, that is houses that are closer together, um, would you still have the same soil analysis? analysis? The, we don't, in Miami Township, have any uh, runoff regulations, like say the village does, where you have to not increase the amount of runoff from the development, mm -hmm. from the pre-development conditions to the post-development conditions. It's the, the general concept that, that's followed. So that in the township, if you do a development, you don't have to have a detention area or, or any of those things. That has been mostly successful, not always, because our, our houses have been so far apart. Mm -hmm. As we build more and more, we start, I start hearing about people talking about the neighbors run off going across my yard, mm -hmm. but they still have big enough yards that it hasn't, you know, hasn't been a, a complaint where someone comes stomping in here. We do know, and of course it was a very poorly designed development, but suppose Lamont and Carroll were a PUD with surrounding land open space. They have, you know, we, they would have terrible drainage problems. It's amazing that their septic systems even work out there. Um, now that's not to say that we can't improve our, our, our regulations or our procedures to make sure that we we cover those, but we we haven't had to deal with that, and that's not in our code. The only concerns we've had about, are about interfering with existing tiles for farm drainage, and that's not actually in the code. That's just an accepted procedure. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd like to recommend a compromise. And as I hope everyone knows, and for the benefit of the general public, um, the uh, authority of the Touch of Trustees in these matters is either to accept the recommendation of the Zoning Commission, um, deny the recommendation of the Zoning Commission, or modify the recommendation of the Zoning Commission. And you may recall that it was the recommendation of the Green County Regional Planning Coordinating Commission to um, in, in, in this work to accept the Zoning Commission's recommendations to remove R2 and R3 uh, sections of the Zoning Code and to send back to the um, Planning Commission uh, PUD for them to rewrite it, uh, to modify it to their, uh, to their liking. Um, I would go a step further on that and I would say uh, I would recommend modifying their recommendation to remove the two sections within the PUD for the 
business and the industrial uh, portion of it and to send it back to the Zoning Commission and have them um, work on rewriting the residential portion of it uh, with perhaps uh, um, advice from uh, regional planning uh, director, uh, Shoemaker, as to what would be uh, more to their liking. So you're saying let's there are three parts to the recommendation. Let's accept two and send modify the send third. one back suggesting that it be modified. We don't have uh, to send it back. You can it's there. Yeah. It, it remains. Um, what's the difference between that and accepting all three? and saying we want a new improved plan unit development resolution. May I, may I address that? I, I think that that would be acceptable, but I would encourage you, if you follow that route, to specify in some way, or make some bullet points, whatever it is, what you want the PUD chapter to accomplish. Either, right, would say one. that in either. Because the Zoning Commission <laughs> talked at length about rewriting the chapter and couldn't figure out in their mind, in their perception of, of their job of making the code match the comprehensive plan of how they would rewrite it. I mean, that, that, that discussion was there. You know, maybe we should just rewrite this chapter. The other thing is, and, and this is just the, you know, being honest and the Zoning Commission agrees, it could be a long time before there's a new, a new chapter. That's, but, that's my but, in the, but the old one stays in place with its possible risks and abuses, as well as its possible good uses. Right. That's but my but if they knew what the good parts were that need to be included, you know, uh, what's that the minimum or maximum size of a PUD? That seems to be their well, I know. issue, not ours. Well, but it's your well, issue I, because you feel that it, something needs to be there. And so I'm just asking for some help from you who are saying, no, we want one. Well, what is it? What part of it is it that we want? Okay, I'm, I'm saying something that, needs to be there for I'm two I'm just reasons. asking for that for two reasons. One, because it exists, so I don't see a reason to take it out. And two, because we have a PUD zoning district in our zoning map, and I think it's ridiculous to have a zoning district without the corresponding text. Oh, that's no problem. A PUD is not a zone. No, oh, okay. It's, it's, it's creating a new zone each time you put a PUD in. Right. So another PUD has a totally different set of rules. Each one is, is a distinct zone. So that oh. there's no problem with eliminating the chapter. No way it compromises Willowfields in any way. Okay, well I, I, I stand by my recommendation to uh, modify the section. Um, and if they either want to review it again or just leave it the way it is, that's fine with me. Yeah, but still take out the industrial and the business portion of it. I'd be more comfortable with them looking at removing industrial and business section of the text and yeah. changing the map. We've talked about that, but for example, there's no way that you can eliminate Morris Bean. Right. They've got to have an industrial zone to to exist, and that you know that's we've we've looked. We're, I mean, we're looking at business and industry right now, but it's not a case of of not having any properties there. Right. Now on the on the business it might be possible that the, the three landowners that own business zone property would could agree, but one of those actually has a business on it. I understand. So yeah. it's, no, it's a little right. that's a little trickier. But no, the in this overall review process we are looking at those challenges. Okay, uh, no two ways about it. Excellent. And um, you know and, and it, it may be you know, the, the more appropriate situations in those may be to talk to property owners and ask them if they would consider any of the land that's not being used for business or industry to, to rezone so that 
that we are not encouraging activities that, that, that probably we don't want to have happen. Yeah, well, we have had probably notice requests that change. Could I interrupt for a moment? Is there a carbon monoxide sensor in this room? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm feeling something Because I smell the exhaust, and yeah. it's pretty bad. Well, well it's not going to have to open that door. No. Oh, no. Gee, gee, you. We fire out, so I have big fans. Anyway, back to the... <laughs> Where's our canary when we need to eat? <laughs> Maybe all of us. I uh, have said my bit. I said my bit. You got any more bit? <laughs> no. Okay, I, I will make the motion that I am recommending to uh, accept the first two recommendations from the Zoning Commission and modify the third by leaving the residential PUD and removing the business and industrial portion of it. So that's a motion. Right here, second. <laughs> I'll second that. Okay. Is there any further discussion regarding that motion? Yes. Okay. Uh, my reason for wanting to leave it in is so it will get changed. But I think that there is advantage in having plan unit development option. And that if it's completely eliminated, it's less likely to get changed. The, the new improved is less likely to come back. Okay, and I, and I will say, at least as long as I'm in my position, the, if, if it is clear what the new improved needs to promote, it will get done. Well, I'll, I'll take that on as a concern. I'm not saying that, that my opinion is what everyone else is going to agree with. But I'll work on what what would be changes be in addition to just removing the industrial and business option of a PUD. Okay, anything else? Hearing none, you vote, please. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Thank you. Um, anything else for zoning? Does that close the public hearing then? Uh, we could close it. It's up to you. It's seeing no other public. Moving right along, is there any new business this evening? Any old business? We don't have our reports. Not till next meeting. Well, you already made my no, report. No, we do have a, um, a mileage thing to sign, but that's not a really business thing. We just, before you go, we need to sign that mileage. Oh yeah. Counting order. Uh -huh. I, I, I guess I would like to say something in the new business. Okay. Do it. I want to repeat what's already been said that if we support, if as an individual, we support the uh, gas user fee, or revenue increase uh, of 18 cents a gallon, it's important to speak up. I agree. That is the key thing that came out of the transportation advisory. Speak up to us or to the, to the powers of being well, to the, in Columbus? Uh, to legislators and in the press. Almost had to move that one. <laughs> okay, we're adjourned.